Opening kickoff. We got to be precise with our mechanics. Let's watch our umpire coming up the sideline. What do we prefer? Squaring off. He takes a nice, relaxing round off here to the spot. Look at that. We prefer, remember, working in the white, squaring off. Precision. It just looks good on tape. Watch the smooth mechanics by our short wing at the top of the field as the play comes to his side. As I said in a videotape many, many moons ago, slide, glide, work outside. Beautiful mechanics. False start early in the game. First, let's look at the flag toss bottom of the screen. We do want the flags going straight up, but is there a need to launch it like that? I mean, is that thing ever coming down? Remember, as officials, we don't want to draw attention to ourselves. And that flag toss, man, where is it? I'm looking at that, and I'm wondering in awe. Wow, what a toss. We don't want to do that. Just put it up a couple feet, get in, and get out of it. So watch those flag tosses. Now watch how the crew gets in and out of this enforcement. Should be about 10 seconds or so to get out of this false start enforcement. Our uh, referee checks what we have. Boom. Dead ball. False start. Look at that. About 10 seconds. Superb enforcement by the crew. We got to get 100% of the safety fouls, especially the illegal blindside blocks. Oh my goodness, we got a decleter here and we've got our two deep officials should see it. We can see our player right here. Lining it up. Just blows him up. The kicking team play player does not see it coming. Boom. Illegal blindside block. We have two deep wings. Either one of them should get it. Our wing down here, short wing, should be ahead of the action. He should see it. We cannot miss these type blocks. Just blows him up, decletes him, and we need a flag down. Excellent mechanics here on a sack. The uh, forward progress spot is the 33. We're not going to see it all, but uh, the referee is going to come circle around to get the spot. And later in the video, you're going to see our short wing appear in the screen. There's our umpire hustling, and look. Our short wing right here coming in with the spot at about the 33-yard line. Just great mechanics and hustle all around. Nobody's walking. Nobody's standing around. Everybody understands the importance of getting, getting this spot correct, and they do. Great job. Textbook mechanics by the umpire. Reads pass. He's going to step up to the line of scrimmage. This umpire is in shape, and he's hustling. He's focused, gliding up to the line of scrimmage. We've got to pass down the sideline. We don't see our deep wing, do we? Why? Because he's given himself plenty of cushion down there. But as the play ends, he's going to come up and help clean up. Great mechanics by the crew. What I find over the years is some areas of the state have some very good officiating and some uh, need to work on it a little bit. And here we got our line judge at the top of the screen. We talk about line to gain awareness. He knows where that stake is across the field, all the way across the field. He knows where the line to gain is. And watch, there's going to be a big pileup after a short run on the right side. No hesitation. He's not thinking or guessing. He's killing the clock as he comes in, not playing around. He's selling it. We got a first down. Let's move on. We're not going to measure at any point in this game. We never have to. It's a well-marked field. We play with tick marks. We always start on a tick mark and end on a tick mark. We know where the line to gain is, as our line judge does here. Slides down to the line to gain, squares off, realizes we have a first down. No fuss. No muss. We're moving on. Great work. 
Again, excellent mechanics by our deep wings. He remains planted on the goal line. If the play comes your way, you can back up a couple of steps. But both deep wings here, uh, you can barely see him coming in here, remain planted on the goal line. No need to enter into the end zone. Just stay still. Let the play come to you. Good mechanics. Here's a play for the coaches. Let's watch the clock. There's the snap. Little delay in getting the clock started. We got an incomplete pass. The clock should stop at 544, correct? It doesn't stop. Why is that? I think the coaches need to lobby the state to put a certified official up on the clock for these championship games. Dating back to when these championship games were played at Raven Stadium, I can tell you, because I've worked them all as an evaluator, there has been at least two or three major clock snafus every single championship series. You really need to lobby the state to put a certified clock operator on the stadium clock. That is an official who has taken the Federation exam and passed it and is certified. The local associations provide on-field officials. They can also provide a certified clock operator that's going to pay attention during the game. Look, the clock is still running, and the crew has stopped the clock. Is it going to stop? Finally, another signal, and our clock operator upstairs finally recognizes, whoops, I better stop the game. Remember, or stop the clock. Remember, this should have stopped at 544. We've lost 43 seconds. Now we've got a major snafu. The crew has to figure out how much time we need to put back on the clock. they got to think back to when that incomplete pass was and then advise the stadium clock operator. Hey, reset the clock to 544 and go on the snap. Again, as coaches, you really need to lobby the state to get a certified clock operator, one who is a member of a local officiating organization who has taken the Federation exam and passed it. Otherwise, you're going to have to continue to have these mistakes with the clock, and I would hate for it to affect one of your games. Enough said. Now, let's watch our wing at the top of the screen. He's going to have the runner down inbounds, and a first down has been gained. So I know some associations whined to indicate he's in bounds and then kill the clock because we got a first down. But across the country, this is generally an obsolete mechanic. It's not used much anymore. And uh, it just further delays getting the clock stopped. So if we got a first down, let's kill the clock. Then let the referee know whether we're going on the ready for play or the snap. And the official can just look back towards the referee and snap his fingers, indicating we're going on the snap, or give, give the little wind with his arm and finger, just winding a small clock, lets the ref know, hey, we're going as soon as that ball is ready to go. So, again, good mechanics here, but it is obsolete. Let's switch this moving forward. If you want to do things smoothly, and properly and in accord with most of the nation just kill the clock on the first down and then look back to the ref and indicate what you got and when we're going to restart uh, the clock we're going to have a long scoring pass here both wings are at the goal line before the runner passes the goal line only issue is top of the screen we want you out in the white Officiate in the white, not on the field. See our wing at the bottom of the screen, good job. And remember, even though the play is not coming near you, we're going to look at the bottom of the screen here. Again, we want to get better, good positioning, but we're too tight on the pylon. Always back up and give yourself some space. Just looks better. Here's another example of the crew getting in and out of a quick enforcement. And I talk about flag toss in the 4A for these line of scrimmage fouls. Now, we do want you to put the flag in the air. Just put it up. Don't put it to a side. But watch the flag toss. 
I mean, he's he's going hunting for birds here. And again, we don't need the flag tossed that high because it just draws attention to the official. Just put it up. Nice, easy toss right here and right back down on the ground. It does not have to shoot off the screen and then come back down as it does here. But in any event, there's the foul. There's the flag. We'll put the uh, timer on. Look how quickly they're going to get in and out of this enforcement. Look at that. Good signal, good announcement. And again, 10 seconds, we're in and out of it. Good job. Deep wing, top of the screen. We got a long, long pass. He's already running, and he's not going to get beat to the goal line. Good job. I guarantee you there's a lot of high school officials that would put a flag on the field for offensive pass interference on here. They think they see something, but not this crew. Well-trained, well-prepared. Let the players play, and there's nothing here, as you can see by this play. Just nothing there. Great catch by number three, great athletic play. He is in bounds, and we can see the superb positioning by a well-trained crew on the play. Look, I'm both on the line, good signal, sharp, crisp, great job. Keeping that flag in the pocket, there's just nothing there. Remember what we say, it's got to jump out at you, foul's got to jump out. That's nothing, good job by the crew. To be honest, over the years, I've evaluated the Bayside group in playoff games many, many times, and they just send the best officials out for every championship game. That, there's no messing around. It's certainly not a good old boy network. They just send the best officials in the group, and I think uh, this play says it all. This is the textbook play that all associations should look at for communication on a goal line play. Look at our two wings at the top of the screen, okay? Each of them in perfect position. On the goal line, he's picking up the sideline, and just watch. Perfectly executed mechanics. Look at the communication. Looks back, gets a signal. Is he in? Yes, he is. I'll go up. Let's look at it again. We'll slow it down. Slow it down. What are we looking for here? Well, our wing at the bottom of the screen. He's got the goal line. He was on the pylon. That's fine to start. But what's he doing now? As the play comes towards him, he's going to back up, give him plenty of space to work and to see. We see our short wing. What's he looking at? Sideline responsibility. He's going to make sure the runner does not step out of bounds. So good job so far. Now what's happening? You can see our Deep wing had a good look of the runner and the ball, excuse me, not the runner, the ball breaking the plane of the goal line. Is he going to go up? No. He's going to look back for confirmation from this wing saying, is he in bounds? He looks back. He gets confirmation he's in bounds. And he goes up. It doesn't get any better than this. Now you can see why I love evaluating the Bayside crew, whoever they send. It's just superb, year after year after year. I don't know what they're doing down there on the Eastern Shore for training, but it certainly works. I want to guess it's probably lots and lots of video review and critique, but this is your textbook shot of communication on the goal line. Now, we're still on the same play as the... Uh, Wonderful communication. But here, let's watch our wing here. And he's going to punch forward because he has a forward pass. We want to get rid of that mechanic. If he's punching forward, it's just a waste of motion and it's irrelevant because if you're punching forward and the pass is dropped, you're killing it for an incomplete pass. So why punch forward? No need. And while we're on the subject, why would we ever want to punch backwards? And I know there's some associations that do the punch back when they have a backwards pass. The suggested mechanic and the better mechanic is what we call a whistle or nothing. That is, if you have a forward pass that is incomplete, you kill it. You come in, airing the whistles, waving your arms, incomplete pass. Sell it strong. Or you have nothing, which means you have a live ball, a backwards pass, 
you have nothing, you just continue to officiate the play. So moving forward, if you want the best mechanic on whether a pass is forwards or backwards, eliminate the punching. If it's forward and dropped, we kill it, obviously. If it's forward and caught, the play is going to continue. If we have a backwards pass, we do nothing except continue to officiate the play. No whistle. Very simple. Moving forward, the best mechanic is no punch forward, no punch back. Just have a whistle for an incomplete forward pass or nothing because we've got a live ball, backwards pass, and we're just officiating the play until it's over. The next play is the try, and I want you to laser in on our referee there. He's got his count, and he's focused in on his responsibility, which is kicker holder all the way on this play. Look at that. That's all he's concerned about is the kicker and the holder. Even after the ball is gone, we're going to see him still focused on the aftermath, right? Here, aftermath of the play, still on the kicker holder. Great job. Just look at this, superb deep wing mechanics at the bottom of the screen. Quick pass to the back, and he's going to go 75 yards for a touchdown. Now, our deep wing has already started his run. Remember, our runner here is probably 16, 17 years old, probably runs a 4-5. And look at our official at the bottom of the screen. He finally comes into the screen. He had given himself a great cushion, and he is not going to be beat to the goal line. This kid's running a just a 4-5, and our official allowed himself plenty of space with the retreat, obviously turned and ran when appropriate, and is not getting beat to the goal line. Just a superb piece of officiating. Now, another 20 yards, he probably would have been caught, but not on the 100-yard field. Great work. Deep wing mechanics on a pass, stationary at the goal line. No jumping around, no moving into the end zone. Top of the screen, he's getting there. Pass is down. Yeah, see, there he is. Now let's look to the bottom of the screen. Where is our official? Set up in the green, giving himself plenty of space off the pylon, even though the play's not close to him. Give himself plenty of space to rule. Why isn't he moving? Because he's been trained. When you're in a stationary position, you're better able to see the action. Superb mechanics. Incomplete. We're going to watch our deep wing top of the screen. Now, the Maryland Mechanics Manual does allow the deep wing to go into the end zone to his receiver's depth. I think the deep wing left a little bit early here to get into the end zone, but he corrected himself. He's creeping into the end zone thinking the play is going there, but he realizes it's a potential run, so he scoots back up to the goal line. So good recovery here. We're going to watch the line judge on this play. He's got to hold the line of scrimmage till the ball crosses, but he realizes the quarterback's going to get sacked, so he gets on his horse. Look at the hustle. Coming back and grabbing a spot allows his referee to focus on the action around the quarterback. He doesn't have to worry about the spot. Now, let's see where the spot, we're going to guess on this because we don't have a good camera parallax, but it looks like forward progress is probably stopped right about at the 22-yard line right there. So that's what we want for our spot. Let's see what our official grabs for us. He grabs the 23. So a tip to keep in mind when you're going back for these spots or if you have a wing who decides not to come back for the spot for the referee, for the referee you got to think, wherever you think the spot is, add a yard or two to it, and you'll probably be accurate. If we added a yard here, we might have had a little better spot, but we're nitpicking on this play, which is really all I can do with this crew. They're doing such a wonderful job here. I mean, he's holding the line of scrimmage until he realizes the quarterback's going to get sacked, and man, i got to get back and grab a spot and look at the hustle. And the referee can just continue 
to concentrate on the aftermath around the quarterback. Just a superbly officiated play. On this play, you're going to learn how umpiring is a very dangerous position. You've got to have some awareness here. Work in this position. Watch what happens to the umpire. Just stepping up as he should on a pass play. But he is just obliterated here. So uh, it can happen to even veteran umpires. You want to do this position. Boy, you'd never catch me being an umpire back in the day. Exactly for that reason. But you got to have your head on a swivel as an official and especially as an umpire. you got to see this coming out of your peripheral. Now here we got a wing. He's giving himself about a 10-yard cushion. He's about to turn and run, but he wants to see the play first. And now he's going to turn and run, and uh, he's not getting beat to the goal line. we got a tackle, and he comes back with a spot. Great wing mechanics downfield. Play is going to come at our H. He's going to back off and allow the play to go in front of him. That's fine. Gets the spot, but when we're getting the spot, what do we want to do? Work down the sideline and square off. Here, we round our corners a little bit. Nope, we want to square that corner off. Let's be precise. This play is going to demonstrate one of those little things they don't teach you when you're trying to be an official. But let's watch our H. It's fourth down, right? What's you got to be aware of? We're at the uh, end of the half, and uh, we're in fourth down. So uh, be aware of what's going on on the sidelines. Don't be talked into anything, but be aware. What's the coach doing here? He's just standing there, but our official is aware. He's focused on the line of scrimmage, and now he senses the coach coming over to call timeout and get in there and call the timeout and stop the game. Again, they don't teach you this in officiating training, but you've got to be aware of what's going on, on the sidelines. Certainly, we won't let the coach talk us into a foul or throw in a flag, but you've got to be aware. Time, game situation, potential timeout could be called here. Coach may want to reconsider going for it. So he's stopping the clock, and we're going to kill the play. Nice job. You've heard me talk about ball watching, and we're going to see a textbook ball watcher here by the H on this particular play. Also, you've heard me talk about game awareness. We're at the end of the half. The team's obviously going to try to score. It's going to be a passing situation. And we've got to be aware of that and stop watching the ball, stop worrying about what's going on at the line of scrimmage. Watch our head linesman. Remember, the mechanics manual says you read pass, slide downfield. He's going to hold the line of scrimmage. He needs to be down here. He does no good, and you can see the bill of his cap. He is just focused on that quarterback when he's got receivers running free downfield. And we look downfield, look where our H is. It's about the 32-yard line when he should be moving downfield. And what do we have here? Three sets of receivers that he can help with here, here, here. And our poor, deep official has to take control of all of it. And he does. You can see he had really good positioning to see the action, and he rules incomplete out of bounds. Now, what should have happened here is we should have had our H moving downfield, not focusing on the ball, and he should have helped with the catch, no catch. The uh, deep wing had to make the call all by himself. Now, let's look at it. We've got firm grip, grip and control, and even from the YouTube non-HD video, we can see the first foot is out of bounds. So he's worried about the catch and the foot, he should only be worrying about the catch, and the H should get the foot, but the H is out of position, no game awareness, and praise goes to our deep official for making this call, and it is a correct call. Out of bounds. Nice job. I know, I know, I know. All you sharp officials saying, hey, you can't leave this play yet. What do we have here? We've got an illegal formation at the snap. Okay? We're all set. Let's count them. One. Two, three, four, and five in the backfield. We've got an illegal formation at the snap, and we need flags down. Now, we have talked about the philosophy of trying to make these players legal. So let's watch this fellow here. He's 
motioning across the formation, but he just stops. And we understand trying to make him legal if we can, but he's not. He's lined up on the line with the rest of his players, so we have to put him in the backfield. When it is this blatant that he's in the backfield, we got to put him back there and we need to have a flag down. We understand the concept. Hey, try to make him legal. But again, when it is as blatant as this, that he is in the backfield, no way his head is breaking the waistline of the snapper, we got to have a flag down for an illegal formation. Here we are at the start of the uh, second half. You just got to love this. Look at our umpire. First, he's in shape. He's hustling. We got a pass play. He's going to step up to the line of scrimmage. The pass is over the middle. Watch him spin just in case he has to off offer some assistance on a catch, no catch. And then he hustles after the ball. You got to love it. Great work. Two things to take a look at at this play. First, we're going to look at our umpire. Oh, there he is. Right here. Look at the focus. Pass play. He steps up to the line of scrimmage. He's right where he needs to be. And, and if you look at his face, maybe we can get in a little bit closer. Look at the bill of his cap. He's not watching the ball. He's watching the action amongst the blockers. Great job there. Good hustle. Makes it up to the line of scrimmage in case he needs to make a call there. And still on the same play, we can see our line judge holding the line of scrimmage. And as soon as the ball crosses, the line judge takes off downfield to help in any way he can. We can see our official on the goal line, and he's out in the green. He backed off the white. He's not hugging the pylon. I know the camera parallax is tough here, but he's giving himself some space to see and rule touchdown. Good positioning. Good work. Here's the kick, the next one after enforcement of the five-yard penalty, and why are we on the field down here? And I think this might be the umpire, which is probably why he's rounding off his corners. You know, a sharp wing official is going to be sharp and precise, going to work up the white and square off, but our umpire here takes a nice, long, lazy curve to come in and mark the spot. See the difference? We want precision mechanics. You listening umpires out there when you go work these kicks, come up the white all the way and square off. It looks so much better. Even the good crews lose focus. We got six interior linemen. We got six other players. We got 12 on the field at the snap. We also got one, two, three, four, five in the backfield. So our rocket launcher down here, he has a flag for illegal formation. But the crew should have shut this thing down. They got 12. Illegal substitution, back them up five yards. Instead, they let the play go off, and now the offense is going to get penalized 15 yards. There's a lengthy discussion about to occur. We're not going to show it all. It just takes forever to get this thing straightened out. But the end result is, if the referee and umpire had counted pre-snap, they could have shut the play down and just enforced a five-yard penalty. Instead, we're going to back up the offense 15 yards. And in fact, the umpire, I didn't show it on this clip, but did put his arm up that he had 11. So you can't take a playoff. you got to count each and every play. And we, we should have shut this thing down as a substitution foul and just penalized him five yards instead of the 15 that's about to go against the offense. Enough said. On this play, we've got encroachment by the nose guard right there. That is a foul. This play needs to be shut down. The announcers of the game said, oh, the offense gets a free play here. No, under Federation rules, this is a dead ball foul. This is a missed call. This play should have been shut down right there. Now, as we finish the play, we got great communication on the sidelines by our two officials. Notice our H. He's well downfield where he needs to be. Our deep wing is coming in. He's well spaced. We got two sets of eyes on the play. Notice the patience discussing what they have. The short wing is saying, I've got the hand down before the foot. 
and the uh, replay will show that. That is clearly a correct call. The runner was out of bounds. We've got balls up. We've got firm grip and control right there. Now we want a body part down. Is it going to be... You'd think it's going to be this foot, right? That foot still hasn't hit the ground. And the hand hits first. We've got great communication by the two officials in position to see it. And we got a great correct call by the crew here. The only problem is, play should have never happened because we've got encroachment by the defense. Shut it down. Dead ball foul. Three comments for three officials. First, we'll take a look at the umpire. It's a pass play. He's got to be stepping up to the line of scrimmage. Here, he's frozen in the defensive backfield. Deep wing down at the bottom of the screen. Probably in a little bit too close. You want to start your retreat a little bit earlier so you can make sure you get to the goal line before the players do. I think if this was a completed pass, we probably would not have had a an official on the goal line. And when we look at the replay from the end zone camera, here it is. Our short wing to the left of the screen. What is he doing? Officiating on the field right here. Remember, we want to officiate off the field. Come down the white. For years, we've been preaching about what does the superior wing official know on every single play? What yard line? Marks the line to gain here. I think it's the uh, probably the 37. Let's watch our line judge. Line to gain has been reached. He's not even thinking about it. We've got a first down. Well marked field. The 37 has been breached. We're moving the change. That, my friends, is the textbook definition of line to gain awareness. Remember, Officiate off the field. Stay in the white until you need to come onto the field. And when you do come on, we want you to square off, not round your corners. Here we can see the official is officiating on the field. And instead of rounding the corners, we want you to square off. It looks so much more precise on film. We do appreciate hustling as a football official, but remember, over-hustling can result in reduced coverage when you overrun the optimal position from which to observe the play. What's going to happen here? Interception and an incorrect call for a block below the waist. Let's watch it full speed, and then we're going to go back and review the play. First, our deep wing goes into a dead sprint here. All he's concerned about is sprinting upfield. When if he just slowed down just a bit, he doesn't want to be watching that runner. The H has the runner. He can pick up the action behind or next to the runner. And here's where we have the incorrect call. We can see the defender. He's bending down, but he hits him above the belt buckle. That is a legal block, and we can watch our umpire here. What's he doing? He is thinking he saw a foul. And what happens when you think you saw a foul? It's not there. you got to see the entire block. So that is a legal block and an incorrect call. If our deep wing had slowed down just a bit and observed the action around the runner, he could have come in and talked this umpire off of his flag. That is a legal block. Remember... If we think we see a foul, we didn't. It's got to scream, I am a foul. That's a good block. Note where the ball snapped at the 42-yard line. We've got a receiver blocking downfield right here. When do OPI restrictions start for the offense? When the ball is snapped. He can't be blocking downfield. And we got a completion. And it looks like about a 15-yard gain or so. But we do have a flag down, so good job. Now the crew does get in and talk about this a little bit. We're snapped at the 42. Where is this ball caught? Behind the line of scrimmage. So we can't have OPI. 
The crew does come in, they discuss it, and they wave off the flag. Exactly how you're supposed to officiate the play here. Got a flag down, an official says, hey, I've got a receiver blocking downfield on a pass play. That's OPI. The wings come in, discuss with the referee. That ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage. Therefore, we got to wave this flag off for OPI. Excellent communication amongst the crew. All right, Chuck, where's that flag? You're going to wave it off. Come on. Here we go. Waving it off. Good job by the crew. Superb job by the deep wing up here. Play is going to come right at him. He needs to retreat and not be beat to the goal line. He knows where the goal line is. He turns and backs off, gives himself plenty of space to work outside the white, does not come off the goal line, and is in excellent position to make the call. Good mechanics. Game situation. We got fourth and about five. So what does the headlinesman need to know? Where is this football in relation to the tape on the chains? That is, does a five-yard penalty get us a first down, or will a five-yard penalty be just short of the first down? He should be thinking and shouting to his referee, even though the ref can't hear him. Short five, short five, short five. So we know if we got a five-yard penalty against the defense, we're moving the chains. We're not measuring. Or long five, long five, long five, and we got a five-yard penalty against the defense, we can shout back to the ref, Chuck, we got fourth and short after we mark off the penalty. Now, we know where the line to gain is here. It's 49. So, our H at the snap. Go ahead and get to the 49. Line judge. Go ahead and get to the 49. That's the most important line on the field on this particular play. You can always work back to the spot if he's short. But if you're on that line to gain, you're in great position to rule, first down or not, or work back to the spot. So our headlinesman, he's kind of just stuck there. Go ahead and get to the 49 and set up on the line to gain. And then you can always work back to the spot here. Don't run even with the runner. So here, kind of confused a little bit. He doesn't square off. Looks like he's got a spot at the 50, but now watch what he's going to do. He's going to move to his right a little bit. So really don't wear, know where that ball is going to be spotted. We've got to be precise on these mechanics, especially when it is fourth down. Again, know where the line to gain is. Know whether the ball is in front of the tick mark or behind the tick mark on the chains, get to the line to gain, get to the line to gain, and then work back to the spot. And stay off the field until you're crashing. Here, looks like the uh, end of the run is about the 50, but we can't be sure. Let's watch our H. He's not sure. He knows he's short. Looks like he's going to put the ball on the 50, and then he slides to his right a little bit. So we got to just be a little bit more precise with our mechanics. Now, the first next thing we're going to look at, it's getting really close. We've got an official officiating with the whistle in his mouth. I know that's a personal preference, but uh, that is not a good mechanic. There is rarely a need for a quick whistle in a football game. Keep the whistles out of your mouth until you're ready to blow it. No need for a quick whistle. Oh, I spit it out after the snap. We'll just leave it out. All it does is invite inadvertent whistles. Here we get a correct call for what? Well, let's count them. We got three here. We got two up here. All in the backfield, we've got an illegal formation. We've got two flags on the ground. Our official at the top of the screen puts a flag in a nice, quiet area right there. But let's take a look at that flag toss at the bottom of the screen. Looks like a moonshot. Remember, as officials, we do not want to draw attention to ourselves. Jacking flags so far into the sky, there it is, only draws attention to ourselves. We don't want to do that. Just a nice, calm toss of the flag into a quiet area. That's all you need to do. None of these rocket launches.
I think we talked about this about 10 years ago in one of our earlier training tapes. Wing officials, how do you work? Slide, glide, work outside. Look at this. Slide, glide, work outside, square off, come in with the spot. Excellent mechanics. Let's watch the deep wing on this play. And I know the mechanics manual says uh, you should be starting 20 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. I've seen at some points this crew is about 15 yards deep. So remember, deeper is better. And Lord knows where Maryland's going with mechanics in the future. But uh, I suggest at least 20, if not 25 yards, starting position off the line of scrimmage. Because you always want to give yourself more space. So it never hurts to start deeper and if our wing here deep wing started deeper it would give him more cushion instead of looking over his shoulder to try to rule on the play now the rule is correct he does a nice job selling the catch and there's no doubt it was a catch as we'll see on the replay here So the receiver's got firm grip and control, and then he's out of bounds, but the deep official is right on top of the play. So the correction would be, when you discuss your mechanics, because I guess there's no statewide mechanics anymore, start those deep wings 20 or 25 yards off the line of scrimmage. When you get into a game with two teams such as this that are successful passing the ball downfield a long ways, you want to start at 25. Here, our deep wing has only one receiver on his side running a fly pattern. So right at the snap, you should read that and start retreating. And then it gives you just a little bit more cushion on the play instead of having to look over your shoulder and right on top of it. Now, he does a good job making the correct call for the catch. But it's a lot easier if you give yourself some room. So at moving forward, when you discuss mechanics in your organization, if you got two proficient, long-passing teams, start your deep wings 25 yards beyond the line of scrimmage and 20 the other time. Gives you more room and more cushion. Both deep wings do a real nice job getting to the goal line and setting up, giving themselves plenty of space off the pylon, waiting for the runner for a touchdown. So good positioning by our deep wings. Not so sure about our H here again at the bottom of the screen. I think he may be allergic to the white paint on the sidelines because he's coming in the field again. you got to work off the field. Watch our headlinesman, bottom of the screen. The quarterback's going to scramble, and we're going to see our headlinesman. He's going to come in and get a good spot and, while keeping the eye on the action around the quarterback. So he's going to come in, get the spot, see the bill of his cap, looking back to make sure nothing nefarious hope happens around the quarterback, also under the watchful eye of the referee. Now the big question here is, where the heck is the spot? How did the H know where the spot is? Spot's the... Uh, Oh, right there. The spot is the 27-yard line. I think this field just uh, told him where to spot it, the 27-yard line. Good job. This will be the last play we take a look at in this game. Really good mechanics by the deep wing at the bottom of the screen. He's holding the goal line until the last possible second, as you can see. Then his receiver slips into the end zone, and he'll slide to that receiver's depth. Good positioning out in the white, incomplete. I want you to compare this with the uh, 4A game you'll see a little later on, where the officials were just giving up the goal line uh, for no rhyme or reason. But here it's done correctly. He's holding the goal line until it's no longer threatened. It's no longer threatened. You can see him now slide to his receiver's depth, and he's in a good position to make the call. So good mechanics on this play.